Cheers guys, Epix here. Welcome to the first in a multi-part series dealing with the build of a virtual reality arcade. Now, this first episode is also gonna serve as a standalone episode if you're only interested in the ceiling mount for your VR HMD. We're gonna cover all of that, what to purchase, how to go about doing the installation, and kind of my thoughts on it. Started about a year and a half ago, there was a game I played which I maintain to this day passed under most people's radars, super tight, polished, arcade, rail-style shooter called Wrath of the Fire God. And in that quick play that I did on that title, I mentioned how awesome it would be had I had a ceiling-mounted system for VR, because you're constantly tripping over the cable. Well, I'm happy to report if you do a setup similar to this one, you get an absolutely night and day experience. Wave-based shooters, uh, games that require you to rotate frequently, an absolute godsend with a ceiling mounted system. And what's more, you're looking at under 20 bucks US. If like me, you can't kind of invest in a wireless system, this is easily your second best option. It works fantastically. So where I started, guys, was with a little kit. It's called the uh, Medwick Kit. Comes to you in a cardboard rectangular box like this. And it's a made in China product. You can see that with the, the email. Uh, yes, these are, you know, some cheap items in the box, but they function as advertised and they're more than robust enough for the purpose that they serve. So when you purchase one like that, it was 20 bucks Canadian for me, which is gonna be less pounds, euros, US dollars for those of you not in Canada. You're gonna get six of each item, except Velcro ties, you get 10. The items that you get in the kit, this retractable kind of keychain style one, it's basically got two meters of cord you're going to use multiple ones of these in the ceiling mounted system. A carabiner that kind of hooks in. You're going to get six of those carabiners. And then finally, a ceiling hook. There's a strip on here, an adhesive back. And you basically feed that through. That's your end result. Doesn't look like much, but holy crap, does it make a difference. Now, the caveat to all of this, before you get too excited, take a look and see what type of ceiling you have. If you have the popcorn stucco style ceilings, this will not work. You're gonna have to figure something out. Either sand some of the popcorn away to the drywall below or affix some type of piece of flat object. Maybe a piece of plywood that you screw in, etc. But if it's flat like mine, just paint on drywall, you're good to go with this. But ask yourself the question, am I going to remove it ever? If the answer to that is yes or maybe, the kit also comes with six of these pads. And there's a gel-like double-sided sticky item in between the two white pieces of plastic vinyl. So you basically are going to take one off, take the back backing off of this, affix it and then as your last step take the last backing off of the gel like substance stick it onto your ceiling you're good to go i'm going to show you how that was put together you get to see it in action the only additional spend i had guys was this larger carabiner because of the way this system works and how i'm doing it is using my vive breakout box which also works with an Oculus Rift. So if you have a Vive and a Rift, you're pretty much good to go. If you've got just the Rift, you might have to use some extension cables, but I've done that before. That can work fine. Just make sure you've got the right active style cable, etc., HDMI, and you should be fine. But if you've got a Vive breakout box, that's probably your best option just for simplicity because that breakout box already comes with you know, a bit of extension on its own between the desktop and the box itself. I've taken that box and Velcroed it to the wall, which you'll see shortly. 
So where I was going with that is a larger carabiner, which just cost me over a buck. So I'm still under 20 bucks US. The first retractable hook and carabiner uses the larger one so that I can have all three solutions plugged in, meaning PlayStation VR, Rift, and Vive all can have their cables rest in this carabiner. Then it's just a matter of threading the HMD for whichever one I happen to use through the remaining hooks, which takes under 30 seconds, guys. That's how quick it is. So you might want to purchase that if, like me, you have multiple solutions that you want to kind of ready. And it's not that I'm plugging the PlayStation VR into the breakout box. I'm not. It has its own. But that first bit of cable will pass through this carabiner. Then it's just a matter, like I said, of threading them through. So guys, let's take a look at what the final system looks like. And I'll show you a little bit of it in action. So here's the Vive breakout box. I Velcroed it to the wall. That way it can be removed and you can see it goes up. It's the Oculus Rift cable that's plugged in there right now and threaded through the carabiner near the top there. There's the second, third, and then the final one. So I added this fourth because of the HTC Vive's heavier cable. But if you're just doing an Oculus Rift, for example, three is sufficient, but four for Vive uh, works perfectly. And then the idea being, and you'll see this later, you thread the slack towards the wall side. The actual installation just takes a few seconds. You just want to make sure that your end retractable unit, the one that I'm pulling down here, is where your center point is in your room. Just make sure that you've got that in the proper location. You can see these all retract here. And again, you can adjust the little silver weights that you see there if you want more slack right off the get-go. Now, I went with that larger carabiner just so that I could have all the HMDs connected to start with. So here's a demonstration of how quickly you know, providing you've got it attached to that first carabiner, this is how quick you're good to get going here. You basically thread it through the three remainders, leave sufficient slack where you need it. You can also ensure that that last one doesn't simply slide through because you'll find there are times it might bunch up a little bit. So if you prevent that, you know, maybe a little bit of tape or, or somehow tie it off there, You'll always have enough cable and have that retractable, you know, provide you with more give if you need it. So you can see mine's a combination of the retractable plus the cable itself threading through. But then watch when I stand back up. Notice there's a bit of slack now, kind of loose. You can prevent that by affixing it to that last carabiner so it doesn't slide through on that last one. And they'll give you more than enough space for most applications. Now, it didn't bother me. It's still up high. You can still do your turnaround, but you are going to whack it into the side of your head on occasion like that. So having it permanently on that last hook, uh, non-movable, might be the, way, uh, the better way to go about it for the long term. I'm going to have to experiment with that myself still. Either way, as you can see, more than enough cable I tested it. I was able to walk all the way to my door with ease. I could go right down to the ground. In fact, you'll see the unit here just go down and it's resting on the ground right now. No issue at all. It just provides you with enough because of those retract. Now just the process in reverse, how quickly you can remove one of the HMDs from this. And again, if you left them all, like you can see in the background there, I've got the Vive in there as well with that larger carabiner. In fact, now I'm switching over to the Vive. And you can see the process. Uh, ideally, you would have that cable ready because I was testing it wasn't. But still, the point is, it's very quick and easy to thread. Now, I mentioned with the Rift cable, that last carabiner, you probably want to affix it with a specific amount of slack and then make it so that the cable can't slide through that. You don't need to worry about that with the Vive cable because it's actually big enough that it doesn't just slide through. All the retractables work like they're supposed to. So I found it actually worked a little bit better with the HTC Vive. You're gonna see here, 
So this final one is affixed. And what I do is now push the slack back or rather pull the slack back through towards the wall side. And here as well, I'm gonna take up that slack and you'll see when I wear it, it just, it works even better, in my opinion, than, than the Rift. But again, quick to resolve on the Rift, just make it not be able to slide through that last one and you're good to go. So you can see here, of course, the Vive, a tighter fit to the forehead. It's on and away you go. And likewise, easily walk, you know, throughout the perimeter. Now this is my office game area which is a lot smaller than the one that I have out in the main part of the man cave but more than generous enough for a decent you know I would say mid-size room scale experience it's nowhere near the the large end but it's certainly not the smallest either yeah it works really well and here just removing it in reverse and there we go so this is the other room this is the adjoining one much much larger it's about um almost four by four meters, 16 by 16 feet. That elliptical will be removed. I'm also gonna take that Ikea sectional that you see in the background. I'm going to remove the ends. So it'll just be a little kind of a love seat there and an additional place for people to sit. The main floor space there in front of the TV, kind of where that black chair is, that whole empty hardwood area. That's where I'm gonna put the connectable tiles for the VR arcade and the room scale arena. So you can see me walking there. There's gonna be in that area there, the PVC cage. And then in the background there where the arcade monitors are, I'm gonna have those all cleared and the cockpit racer style. But you can see there's room here just walking around. That TV is gonna be up on the wall, that couch back a little bit further. So I worked it out, it's about eight by eight feet. So two and a half by two and a half meters, roughly for room scale space. And then where I'm pointing to right now, that's where the cockpit racer is gonna be. And again, kind of the main arena right there. Along the side, that's where the people will sit. So here's the view from the other end of the room uh, where all that arcade stuff is is the, where the cockpit racer is going to go, and then this is a look back. Again, the TV is going to be up on the wall, the sectional back, so it'll be just enough space, people to sit, one comfortable room scale arena, and a cockpit, because you got to picture the black chair there and half that sectional gone to kind of get the idea of the scale, and of course the elliptical there is gone, but... Uh, it's a decent amount. Like I said, we're about two and a half by two and a half meters. All right, guys, that is it uh, for part one. Hopefully that's assisted you and, uh, you know, you realize it's not a heck of a lot of work and certainly not cost. That whole kit, less than 20 bucks US. Uh, there's all kinds of deals on shipping. Uh, in fact, I think my shipping was just a few dollars on top of that. And honestly, shouldn't take you more than about five, 10 minutes to set up, providing you got a step ladder and you can reach your ceiling, you're gonna be good to go. All right, that's it for part one. The next one, well, that starts the building of the VR arcade. Guys, thanks for watching. As always, cheers.